And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Fassel. I'm Z Garcia, hello. I'm Roy Candy. I'm Mike Delicio, hey there. Today we're talking about a game that I thought was a joke when I first heard it, and that is <laughs> Small World of Warcraft. Uh, it really sounded like when people said put two things together like they used to do on like whose line is it anyway and stuff like that. Um, so I was once I found out it was real, I was like, cool, because I'm a big fan of Small World and I don't World of Warcraft's OK to me. I don't care too strongly about the theme either way. What's what's y'all's background coming into this? Uh, for me, I've played Small World plenty. I've played tons of the expansions, tons of the content. I have a very passing uh, knowledge of what World of Warcraft involves. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't bother me. I'm not pushed out by it. I kind of understand what it does. So that was fine. But it wasn't a hook. For me, um, I actually got a copy of Small World, but then never ended up playing it. And it was one of the things that I left behind when I moved down here to Miami. Um, but so I'm coming into this having never played Small World. I don't. I also don't have a huge World of Warcraft um, background, but I really enjoy Hearthstone. So a lot of the different races and things like that are familiar from playing Hearthstone a lot. I played uh, Small World a fair amount. Uh, didn't get into any of the expansion materials. Um, and as far as Warcraft goes, I am familiar with it. Uh, but it was never a huge thing for me. I never played it. Uh, but I'm similar to Z. I guess I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other for it. It's fine, but it didn't draw me into the game. I will say I played the game with my girlfriend, who is a huge World of Warcraft ah, fan. Okay. Played, played many years of the MMO. So I did get that perspective, okay? Okay. Ah, good. All right, folks. Good. Well, we're actually not not in this video. I'm not going to be comparing it to Small World. I'll be doing that in a separate video. This is <laughs> well, you can in the back of it. I'm just saying. <laughs> there you go. Anyhow, here's how it plays. In this game, players are going to be playing on several double-sided islands. You pick which side you're going to play with. The size of the islands are going to be decided by how many players in the game, decided in the number of each one. Uh, players are going to be playing through a certain number of rounds based on how many players are playing. So if we're playing with five players, we're going to play eight rounds, four players, we're going to play nine rounds and two to three players, ten rounds. And in each of these rounds, players are going to be picking either a race that they're going to be making active and doing something with on the boards or putting a race into decline. The whole game is about getting victory points, and players will start with a few victory points, but when it's on your first turn, and any turn after you put a race into decline, you're going to pick a new combo, and these are going to be randomly chosen. So here we have Swamp Walker Night Elves, Intimidating Tarin, uh, Explorer Blood Elves, Marsh Dwell Orcs, Herbalist Humans, and Archaeologist Gnomes. And you can pick any one you want, but if you skip the first one, let's say I really want Explorer Blood Elves, I need to put a point on each one that I skip so that if someone else wants to take Swamp Walker Night Elves, uh, they're going to do so and they're also going to get a point. But let's say in this case I decide I do want Swamp Walker Night Elves. I'm going to get eight of them. I'm going to add these two numbers together. If I picked Intimidating Tarn, I'd get 15. I'd get nine of the Blood Elves, ten of the Orcs, and nine of the Humans. So at that point then I'm going to find the Blood Elves and I'm going to get eight of them in this case. So I'm going to take eight out of here. And now I'm going to use them to attack on the board and or boards. So when you're attacking on a board, you can come in on any of these spots that show an anchor. And it, normally, whenever you attack an area, you need two tokens. To come in on one of those anchors costs an extra one, so maybe I'd put three here to take that spot. Now I want to beat this spot, which this starts with a neutral murloc in it. But it doesn't matter if it was a murloc. It could even be someone from another uh, race there that I want to destroy. It doesn't matter. So I need to put two in to attack. And then for each other thing that's there, I'm going to need to put another one in. So with this murloc, I would have to put a third one in. And then the murloc's removed. If I want to go in this mountain, the mountain areas all start with a mountain thing in. So I would need to put three in there. But wait a minute. I only have two left over. Well, good news. 
Whenever you're making your last conquest, you can roll this die. So let's roll. Blank, nothing happens. I take these two in my hand, and I'll keep them till next turn. If I had rolled a one, two, or three, that would be as if I had that many extra of these, and I could have conquered this spot and left them there. At the beginning of my next turn, I can take as many of these off the board as I want, so I'd probably leave one in each territory, and then I can just start from an adjacent territory and start conquering again. I want to conquer this spot here, so I'd put two there to attack and one more for the Murloc, taking rid of the Murloc, and I get to reveal this. Ooh, it's an artifact that I can use in the future. There are artifacts and there are special things that um, legendary places and the sheet will tell you what each of these done. So I just found Frostmourne, which I can use once per turn to conquer a region at a cost of two tokens less than normal. Ooh. And But wherever I conquer with this blade, I have to put that artifact and if someone else captures it, they can take it from me. And I don't even have to keep going from an adjacent place. I can always pay three and come in and start on another island. That's up to me. When your turn's finished, you are going to score points. You get a point for every area that you control. So in this case, I would get four points. But your special abilities and other things are also likely going to affect what you can do. So in this case, I'm the Swamp Walkers. So the Swamp Walkers, according to the reference guide, I find the Swamp Walkers. I get an extra victory point for each swamp region that I control. I do control a swamp region, so that's an extra victory point. Then I look at the Night Elves. The Night Elves can conquer forest regions at one token less than normal. Oh, I didn't even need to put two tokens here. I could have just put one there when I conquered it. And not only that, but the Night Elves also can put a Wisp Will token, which gives me an extra defense in forest regions. So that's pretty cool. So there's a bunch of tokens that happen to be here just for them. And I could put an extra one here. And if someone wants to conquer that from me, they're going to have to pay an extra token. So that's pretty much it. Each time it's your turn, you pick up your, your things and you move around and attack people. Now, when you attack another player, let's say there was a pile of these nasty-looking creatures there, these goblins, and I conquered them, one of them is permanently removed and sent back to the box. The rest go back to that player and they can use them. But you can see if that keeps happening, you're going to run out of tokens after a while. So on your turn, instead of doing something, you might say, we're going into decline. When you don't go into decline, you'll turn all your tokens over. You'll also turn your special abilities over, which will sometimes still be working. But in this case, you can see the Night Elf, the tokens don't, you know, the, the special abilities here don't get anything anymore. And on my next turn, I can start another race. I can move that race around, and I can attack different regions on the board. I could even attack my race and decline, but I probably wouldn't want to because these are going to still score me a point as they stay out on the board. Each of the different races is also either going to be part of the Alliance or the Hordes, and it shows you down here in the corner which one they are. And if you attack another race of the opposing Alliance or Horde, you will get an extra coin for taking them out. There's also some neutral races that are included in the game, like the Kobolds here are neither on the Alliance or the Horde. And there are lots of special abilities in the game. So let's say, for example, I have Garrison. I get these extra tokens. Many of the abilities come with extra tokens that you can use. You have the Worgen here who, at the beginning of the turn, they can be humans, which give them two extra victory points. Or Worgen where they pay a victory point, but they can conquer a region for one less token than normal. So you have to decide what you're going to be on any given turn. Or you have the goblins, and the goblins will come with a bunch of bombs. And they can put these bombs in regions next to them and flip them over where it might explode or it might be a dud. And they're very dangerous and risky. Or the trolls, or the forsaken, or the dwarves, or the naga. And these can all be combined with all kinds of things. Fishing. And a champion, where you get a champion token who goes around and conquers things. Or some of them are simple. Farming just gives you an extra point for each fields area that you control. In Rage, you get victory points uh, equal to the number of defending race tokens every time you conquer something that has at least two of them in it. So the, the Beastmaster comes with these extra beast tokens that you can use. And there's all sorts of things that you can have and all sorts of combinations. 
There's also a team game included in here, the Battle for Azeroth. And in this one, you will play the Horde versus the Alliance. And if you're playing with an odd number of players, the odd person out will also play as the neutrals. And in this, you'll set them up kind of like this. So the first person might take Explorer Gnomes. And then everything else will slide up and things will be different based on what's picked. And when you pick, instead of putting the coins here, you're going to put the coins, basically pay them to the bank. And that's pretty much it. You then play with teams. So let's say you're playing a two versus two, two alliance versus two horde. You're simply going to take the lower person on each team. Their victory point, that's the score of the team. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Component-wise, the game comes with this sheet, which I've already been showing. Shows you what all the races do. Shows you what all the special powers do. Shows you how a game term works. Shows you the different terrains, in case you're confused, and all the artifacts and legendary places. There's one for every player, and everyone's going to want one of those. The artwork's fantastic. I like these boards. They're fun. And, you know, you can flip over and have different things. You will probably have to look up the special powers. Uh, I do like this case here for all the different races here, and you can have them in here and pull them out and I also like the fact that there's all these tokens there are so many tokens that are used for various things and it just neat to have like it's sometimes I'm tempted to take someone oh I get the bomb tokens I want to take that person oh I get the tower tokens I want to take them everything fits inside an insert here which I'm okay with although I'm getting tired of sticking these coins in nice sections here and you also have to not throw away the inserts so that you that it fits snugly with the top. But for the most part, the components for this, as all Days of Wonder products, are very good. Okay, so a lot to talk about here, but I guess the main thing is um, the World of Warcraft theme. We'll, we'll jump into that first just because I don't know that that is a huge thing. But what did you all think about that theme or don't care or whatever? I'll just say I thought that it was, even though I don't have a huge background in World of Warcraft, even though you said it sounded like a joke, the second thing I thought was, well, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, I feel like it's a very, it's not a tenuous connection between the theme and, and the game itself. It, it, I, thought, I felt like it was a good marriage of, of this IP to this game. I agree with that. I think it's fine, especially when you consider that they... Uh... They put in that little extra mode of you yeah. know yes. having the uh, you know the one side fight against the other one with the neutral factions kind of in the way and depending on the player count they can be in there or not in there. That's mm -hmm. nice. I like that touch. I think it adds a little something. It shows that they were not just slapping that IP on there, but they did some development with it. Right. Even though I don't have super strong connections with the theme, I was excited to see all the different like fantasy races taken from Warcraft and brought into this. I know I know, the Small World is that game about all the different special abilities. I was like, huh, that's going to be interesting. I thought it was an interesting matchup of how that would get all together, you know? Yeah, my connection is mostly Hearthstone mm -hmm. and right. actual original Warcraft 1, 2, and 3. They're but yeah. Soul. Soul. Yeah, I know. No, <laughs> I, I liked it fine. I, I did say I thought, for me, that the extra point for hitting someone from the opposite alliance slash horde I, I i i like the extra scenario i didn't care for that as much it felt mm. tacked on and it, it wasn't very strategic um to me one, how about the one point thing that's what i'm saying it felt like this one point yeah but i didn't feel like the point was worth enough to to have that rule in the game if that makes sense i, I agree i like strategic. it's a cool idea but i would rather just play where i'm playing the horde you know I'm right. always a horde character, and you're right. always alliance. So right. I like that. It's bet. also it's also easy to forget. Quite honestly, there there are. I think it would be very easy to forget. Oh, that's right. I'm supposed to get that extra point. It just seemed a little, you know, fiddly. I actually strongly disagree. I think because <laughs> I thought it was very important. Because if if I knew everybody else was playing characters that were of a certain faction, maybe I would also try to get somebody as that faction so that they wouldn't kill off my units as much. Or I could do the opposite side. If I got a faction that was really lined up to be able to do a lot of damage, I could be like, holy smokes, everybody's alliance out there. Let me get this horde smashing guy. And so I can go around smashing everybody's stuff. There is strategic stuff in there. Even if you say it's not that big of a deal, I think it can matter a lot. I think it's hilarious how you offered that first option as something you would pick. 
<laughs> what? Oh, to like, I would in? pick one that so no one would attack me, or I would right. crush everybody. Come right. on, man. Come we know, on. We know what, well, we know mean, what you're picking. The, the, the horde stuff is is a lot better at like smashing and crushing and things like that. But there are some factions in the alliance that are specifically about being passive and peaceful, and I think all of those special abilities mixed together make for interesting strategy. So I don't think it's true that the, there's no strategy in between that stuff. No, I just no. I'm not saying there's no strategy. I just felt like right. I didn't think that point was worth. An extra rule, but not a big deal. Mm. I did think the theme came out pretty strongly, like the goblins with the bombs. Mm. Yeah, um, that was great. A lot of this stuff, and the, the theme is obviously there to some degree. Like we mm. even made the sounds when we took out the 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 neutral creature, the murlocs. The, <laughs> the murlocs. <laughs> so that's right. Small world, the game. Mike, you'd love it. You said. <laughs> Yeah, see, here's here here's where I'm coming from with this game. Uh, I already knew how I felt about Small World. I felt like it was a mediocre game. I never quite understood the appeal of it. I felt like it was a very basic area control game with a singular hook. And that hook was about when do you put your races into decline. And I know that some people really like that, and, and that's fine. It was never a game that really did much for me. And so I came into this game wondering since i have no real tie to warcraft what's it going to do that makes me maybe change my mind and the the short answer is is that i like it slightly better than base small world but i don't know that there was anything in this game because i don't have that connection to world of warcraft that made it something i would want to play very often it was the opponents mm. yeah what maybe what that. made it slightly better what aspect okay. of it the actually i thought that the uh just those the, the races that we played i felt were more interesting than the races i had played in base uh small world so it may have just been you know that i enjoyed the interaction of those that we had i did also like the islands i felt like maybe there's an expansion for small world that has something similar i hadn't played it i had only played on the base small world map and so i kind of liked having those islands i felt like that was a small little touch um but that's about it. And when I say slightly more, I mean like half a point better. I like it than, than Small World. So not a tremendous amount. Yeah, for me, I, um, yeah, going one to one, again, the themes are kind of a wash for me. I don't mm -hmm. care about either one. Uh, and uh, like I said, my girlfriend loves WoW. And I'll tell you right now, she hated the game. Oh, really? Um, I don't think it's a very good two-player game, especially mm -hmm. using the variant. The, the the one mm -hmm. new, really new thing is that yeah. variant, right? right? Playing one side versus the other. It's not a great two-player because uh, all the neutral factions are out, for one thing. You don't play with them at all. Mm. And then there's just not a ton going on. So the two-player was pretty weak. I remember two-player original Small World just being a little more interesting than that. Mm. But anyway, um, the new map system in the you know in the original uh, small world, you'd have a map for two, a map for three, a map for four. I like this new idea. It takes a little getting used to with the whole mm -hmm. you know where you come in on the board, right. those ports. But it's more there's more variability right out of the box. Oh, for sure. this many players, one large island and one medium one. Great. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's some nice combinations. And so that worked out for me. I like that. The, yeah, overall I thought, but 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 at the end of the day, that's one thing I enjoyed more. I thought the two-player was weaker. I thought the theme's kind of a wash. So it lands in the same place that, that, that original Small World lands for me. Maybe if someone is, again, a huge fan of the theme and they want to play large games, you know, five players stick with five then maybe this will be something mm. that, that will really appeal to them. For me, it's the same. And I did not dislike Small World. I mm. don't dislike this. Roy? I think for me, I'd never ever played Small World before, but uh, I really enjoy the special powers and all that stuff. I, I like area control games. I definitely like ones that are highly interactive where you're taking out your opponents and doing different mm. stuff. And even though this is extremely deterministic, where it's like, I just need a few more pieces than yours, I thought the interaction in between the powers and all of the different factions felt very cool. I enjoy games where you try to figure out who the leader currently is and was like, oh man, Z's running away with it. Or maybe just trying to talk your position up like, hey, I'm not winning, don't attack me, even though everybody knows that's completely not true. I find that stuff enjoyable <laughs> in games. Um, I think I say that 
game. <laughs> I know it's 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 a lot of fun, like trying to do that. Even though negotiation isn't a part of the game itself, just whole that whole like attack over there, not over here. Oh no, freaking Mike with his bombs again! Like stop bombing me, Mike. I don't know. I just find those sort of situations in games very enjoyable. Whether I win or lose, those interactions at the table are are fun for me. Um, so I definitely probably enjoyed the game more than others, just because I love that direct head to head fighting with each other stuff. Mm. I also really like it. I like the direct interaction, but one of the things I like about the direct interaction is it's expected. Right, so if someone sure, comes right. rampaging through and takes me out, eh, you know, it is what it is. Everyone's going to do that to everybody else. If right. everyone's leaving you alone, you will win the game. So sure. they have to come after you. But no matter what, you're starting to fall apart. You're not looking so good. You just take a turn off, essentially, go into the decline and grab a new race and come in. And then you feel uber powerful. Because that first turn you come in, you're just beating up on everybody. You know? right. And it feels great. Right. And right. that's fun because you get to do that two or three times a game. Sure. And I also feel I feel like the game scales well, although I haven't played that scenario two players, so I'll defer to Z on that. But I like I do like the islands. I was initially not keen on that idea, but it works. It works and, well. Yeah, I was the same. Does. I was like, I don't know about this, but you know what? Yeah, it's it's cool. It works. Mm -hmm. It does. Part of the reason I think it works is the artifacts and, and uh, places of power, those were not in the original Small World. They were added in an expansion mm -hmm. later on, mm -hmm. but they are nice. They, they yeah. keep the board from being static. Like, that's a great place. I'm going to go hit that place. I, mm -hmm. you, can't, I can't, you can't let someone turtle on one of those. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And they also... <laughs> They're different every game. They yeah. add a little theme, you know, that's nice too. It's like, oh, this is a summoning stone from WoW. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I don't know. But, <laughs> you know that's the kind of thing. So they add a little a little thematic hook for people who do know the property. Right. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, are we doing final scores here, Tom? Yeah, let's we... jump to Mike first because I'm sure he has the highest score. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I... I'm not gonna, gonna gonna bash the game. I I always thought that it was like I said a mediocre game. I, I I would say that the the base game would have been a six for me had I had I actually done the taken the time to rate it. Um, but for this, <laughs> this game could take time. time. <laughs> this one I am, and and the reason I say that is that this this I'm rating a six point five. I feel like it is as I said before a very basic area control game where. I guess my main beef with it, if I had to put it that way, is that although there's this idea that games are going to be very replayable because you've got all of these different interconnections of the races and the powers, I feel like it's still every game plays out almost exactly the same. I never feel like I'm getting a very dynamic experience by playing it. Um, and the theme is just a little bit better. I like the islands just a little bit better. I really did like playing those goblins. That in and of itself almost made me enjoy the game more. If I could play with the goblins every game, maybe it would be a seven, but I can't. So it's a 6.5, but it's, it's, it's fine. Just never something that I'm gonna go out of my way to play. What about my, you? my score is probably next because I'm rating this the same as the original one, which is a seven. Um, mm -hmm. Actually looked up what I rated Small World, which I had at a 7.5. Uh, but Small World, for me, kind of dropped over time. At some point, I'm sure I rated it an 8, maybe even a 9. A 7 is kind of where it lives right now. Same thing for this one. You know, maybe if it wasn't so late to the party, I would feel a little more strongly about recommending it. Mm. Small World came out in 2009. Yeah. And so I feel like, okay, it, folks who just adore WoW, don't, don't they have Small World? I mean, like, you know... If they locked, if they, if they like that system, didn't they already get that game? Maybe some expansions. It's it's 11 years old. Right. Maybe not. I wish it was a little, you know, it had come out a little closer when the original one came out. But that's neither here nor there. It gets a seven from me because yeah, there's a few things I like more, but other things that feel less uh, engaging. The hook isn't quite there for me. And Roy. I think for me, it's going to be an eight. I really enjoyed the game. I like the way everything goes together. I'm really excited about maybe trying out some of the different things because, I mean, each game you play, that's the point of things about Small World is that the guys will come out in different order and you, you which ones you're going to recruit and which factions you're going to play with are going to be different each according game. According to Mike, Mike says <laughs> it's the same thing every time. Same game It'll be every peaceful, time. 
lay on your backs and die goblins. And Michael be like, goblins. That's it. That's it. Uh, but I, I definitely enjoyed enjoyed all that stuff. Um, I feel like as far as air control games go, there's a lot of other air control games I enjoy more than this one. Um, and uh, just because the the mechanics of the game, it's not super complex. This is like a lighter weight air control game where it's all deterministic. But uh, I still really enjoyed it, and I'm excited to. This is a game that I could easily see picking up or playing at some of our Dice Tower conventions with um, different fans out there and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, for me, it's an 8.5. I love Small World. I mm-hmm. like this. It's essentially, I, I look at them as the same. I mean, this one feels like they took some of the good ideas from expansions, put them in the base box. So it's almost like you're getting the game with an expansion in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the new factions and races. I'm curious if they can be mixed. I don't know if I'm even going to try that or not. Yeah. Um, but it's a solid thing. And I'm also excited the fact that people who are fans of World of Warcraft will mm-hmm. pick this up and play it. Oh, for sure. But this is yeah. one of my scalable games. I like playing this with many different numbers of players. Uh, I feel like it. It's it's the kind of game where... I guess you could memorize how many coins everybody gets per turn, but I never do. So I'm never sure who's winning. Everyone right. says they're winning. At the end, I'm like, huh. But I had fun the whole game. Yeah. Even if I didn't win, I got to do some cool stuff. So I had a cool combination of abilities that nobody else has seen in a while because there's so many different ones. So I like and it we, a lot. We I finally this, killed this... off all Mike's goblins. Yes. <laughs> you did. It took you a while. This, this theme on this game brings to the forefront just how much small world always kind of felt like a like a video game yeah yeah that's true you know yeah it's true well that's it folks small world of warcraft check it out until next time i'm tom vassal i'm c garcia i'm roy kennedy i'm mike delicio have fun gaming